Shannon Sharp and Skip Bayless on their show, Undisputed, they're going to go over about KD and Steph Curry, where they rank, who's ahead of who. Uh, I've stated this in the past, and I'm glad they came across this video over here, uh, that they were stating this, whichever I was listening to here a little bit ago. Uh, I agree, especially, and this is something I've been saying for the past couple of years, even when KD did join. Guys, Steph Curry has always been a greater player than KD. Now, if you're talking starting a team and one-on-one individually, then yeah, some people are probably going to pick Kevin Durant like on a one-on-one game. Maybe if they're starting a franchise. Uh, that Yeah, probably. I mean, I, I don't have a problem with that. But all-time rankings throughout their careers, Steph Curry is a top 15 player of all time. You know, he's pushing around that. I have him probably around that 12 to 13 slot as of right now. If he wins another championship leading the way again, I'm going to have to put him in the top 10. Uh, probably ahead of, I'll probably put him ahead of Wilt or Akeem if that is the case. But we'll probably have to revisit that in a couple years if that does come to fruition. Uh, whenever you're looking at Kevin Durant, guys, and Steph Curry, Katie's always been the better player ever since he was on the Thunder, uh, especially when he was younger in, uh, in 2011 when he went to his first finals. Steph Curry was now starting in that time period to come into the league. Uh, whenever Steph Curry was on the Warriors, it was a very slow process for them. He's been injured. They had the Monte Ellis uh, era. And then within that, guys, in 2014, or 2013, that's when we first saw the first soon-to-be of what the Warriors were and could be, uh, but only around 60%. So in 2013, they did make the playoffs. They were the sixth seed. They went against Andre Iguodala's uh, Denver Nuggets. The Nuggets were favored to win that around probably around six games or so. And the Nuggets came off a very stellar season. Uh, the Warriors, they, they felt like a college team. You know, they were run up and going, hitting a lot of, uh, you know, offense. Uh, the offensive game plan uh, was surround a lot of shooters. So you had Steph Curry, Klay Thompson. During that time, you did have Draymond Green playing around the small forward position. Uh, you did have David Lee running the four. They came in and they took the storm. They took out... Uh, the Nuggets in six, and then eventually losing to the Spurs uh, in six, in which that was a very close and very stellar, that was a stellar series. I love that one right there. And then after that, guys, 2015, or actually 2014, they lost to the Clippers in the first round after uh, picking up Iguodala. And during that period, you know, the Warriors were in an iffy situation. They decided to let go of Mark Jackson. They brought in Steve Kerr as the new head coach. They actually, uh, with David Lee being injured, they moved Draymond Green to the four. They had Harrison Barnes to where he started uh, to exceed and grow a little more in his position. And then everything just clipped. And you have to credit Steve Kerr in this decision making. If Mark Jackson were still the coach, I don't think within that offensive set they would have been as dominant. Maybe so, maybe not. But usually in this game, when it comes to coaches, X's and O's, uh, usually having an offensive-centric mindset works. Whenever you have coaches like Nate McMillan, David Fisdale, uh, you know, Alvin Gentry, they're not down with the X's and O's. This is something to where they don't, re- they don't really have an offensive system set in play, more of motivational and uh, defensive set. But with Steph Curry, the Golden Boy 2015, uh, and since he's won two finals MVPs, unanimous MVP, first time ever in NBA history, he won 73 games. He took, you know, he took the lead by storm. He was the best player in the NBA in 2016, even over LeBron James. And even Kevin Durant was kind of falling off to where he was always in the conversation with LeBron, you know, the number one, number two slot. Uh, he was always number two, but when you're talking about the two greatest players, it was always LeBron and KD for four to five years straight, maybe even more. But Steph Curry for the last two years took that throne from that spot from KD in 2015, and then as well as 2016, he took that away from LeBron. And LeBron, you know, KD had a chance to take it away from Steph after being up 3-1 in the conference finals in 2016. Steph Curry took it right back, and then LeBron actually took the number one slot back from Steph Curry by coming back, (laughs) which is funny, 3-1 against the Warriors, and LeBron proclaimed himself back as the throne, as the king. But as we're looking with Kevin Durant, after 2016, he hadn't won an NBA championship uh, yet. Steph Curry already won one. He's already been to two finals. Uh, Steph Curry should have had two championships by then. Uh, But during that time period, guys, KD elected to join Steph's kingdom. 
And Steph Curry is the foundation of the Golden State Warriors. But I don't want to talk too much into here. Let's see what Shannon Sharp and Skip Bayless have to say about this. And uh, I'll go in here and give my analysis. Listen, this is a very easy conversation and argument. A lot of people who say Kevin Durant is better than Steph Curry all the time, it does not make any sense. Uh, listen, guys, Steph Curry won a championship before Kevin Durant organically. It, w- it had a similar feel of how the Thunder could have won their championship. Steph Curry got the job done. A lot of people will say it's controversial because Kevin Love, Kyrie Irving were hurt. Besides that, guys, even if they were healthy back and forth, I still had the Warriors winning in 2015. They already had a foundation of a team. LeBron James has to run his own system to where he's not always successful in the finals. But whenever you're looking at the Warriors, they had the recipe for success. And we saw that throughout the regular season and as well as the playoffs. They were just destroying everybody with the Pelicans, the Rockets. Uh, I forgot who they play in the second round. It'll probably come to me a little bit later. But that's what we see. When we see Kevin Durant, as he lost, as Steph Curry won the championship and then... Kevin Durant lost to Stephen Curry. We knew during that time period, the Warriors were just getting started as a dynasty. And the Thunder would never, ever come across to where they had that chance again. With the Thunder, uh, you know, going to Game 7 against the Warriors, that was their last chance in their whole career being together as a team with that momentum of possibly beating them. But since they lost, that momentum was gone. Players' mindsets, they're done with. They're like, you know, this is something the Warriors, they're going to take over the league. And with Kevin Durant choosing to go to the Warriors was the weakest move in NBA history, far none. And we've seen through that, guys, the Warriors already had a recipe of winning, even though they did choke a finals. But besides that, the Cavaliers were never, ever going to win another championship, even in 2017, 2018, even if the Warriors did not acquire Kevin Durant. Listen, I know a lot of cats are going to have that argument. Well, Kevin Durant, Steph Curry played together for those two uh, NBA finals to where KD was healthy, and KD won both finals MVPs. Let's evaluate. 2017, even if Kevin Durant wasn't on that team, the Warriors would have won the championship. Now, in 2017, was a weird period in history to where Kevin Durant was new. Everyone was hitting on him in the media, the fans, the outlets, and the Warriors were forced since they got Kevin Durant, to change their offense, more kind of isolated period of focusing on Kevin Durant. Now, within that same change of an offense of Kevin Durant, it changes the flow of their offense. This was something to where we didn't see the normal Golden State Warriors offensive flow like in 2015 and 2016. It was a little more forced with Kevin Durant. You do have a lot of all-stars, but role players and people's roles and the offensive set matters. Uh, But within that, guys, we saw Kevin Durant won the championship 2017. Uh, Within that, guys, he had a stellar finals performance, I'm not going to lie. He averaged around 33 points per game. Very offensive-minded. He was very efficient. Uh, I don't know the numbers, but I know it was definitely at least 50%. He was was nailing every three-pointer, mid-range jumper. He was in his bag. But that's the thing with Kevin Durant. As he joined the Golden State Warriors... He had no pressure, no stress. You know why? Because even if he scores eight points a game in a finals game, he knows he has Steph, Clay, and the rest of the crew. They're just designed to win. So with Kevin Durant not being the only offensive-minded person because 
defenses have to keep their eye on Klay Thompson and Steph Curry, and possibly uh, role players like Leonardo Barbosa, uh, you know, other shooters out there like Quinn Cook. You know, the Warriors had everything going. Uh, but whenever we're looking at this guy's Kevin Durant uh, in 2018, this is something to where Steph Curry should have won the finals MVP, average around 28 points per game. But it was that game three of the 2018 NBA Finals to where Steph Curry didn't have so hot of a game. And then Kevin Durant had to take it over. Uh, and we can even see, I felt like Kevin Durant was trying to give Steph Curry the Finals MVP. You know, kind of laid back a little bit uh, because everyone wanted Steph Curry to win one. But at the end of the day, even after that game three performance uh, wasn't a good one for Steph. Steph Curry came back in game four to shut them down. And I think it was just a media narrative, but they should have gave Curry that 2018 NBA Finals. Man, if Kevin Durant never joined the Golden State Warriors, Steph Curry, no doubt he would have had around three titles. He still would have won 2017, 2018. 2019 probably could have been a different picture. But man, I don't know why Steph Curry let KD to join the team. I know Steph Curry's like Dwayne Wade to where he'll sacrifice and defer. He didn't need to because Steph Curry was the best player in the NBA. Uh, but then, you know, LeBron took it away in the finals. Uh, but Steph Curry still had that dynasty to look forward to. I think that was a detriment to Steph and Clay because they, oh man, if those guys, if they won those two to three extra championships, Steph Curry would be a top five player in the NBA today. Or not uh, not today, but all time. But that's something that kind of affects his rankings. Because if Steph Curry would have three titles as of right now, he definitely would have been in my uh, around top seven, top eight, probably even better uh, within that. Of course, Steph Curry ranks higher than Kevin Durant all time. Kevin Durant joined the 73 and 9 team that didn't need him. How much valuable are you? And whenever Steph Curry was hurt, Kevin Durant couldn't get a winning record with one of the greatest teams of all time. That does not make any sense. Guys, in 2019, when Kevin Durant was out in the first round, Steph Curry and Klay Thompson, the Warriors, proved again they're still the same team and even probably even better without KD. They went to the NBA Finals. They swept the Portland Trailblazers in four games in that conference finals. The, the Warriors, they were always built on Steph and Clay. And then you have role players around them. That's how that's how they've been. And we saw that. The only reason why the Warriors did lose in that 2019 NBA Finals, Clay Thompson was out for game three. Uh, he was out for the remainder of the series and the, the later end of game six. Uh, there were other injuries on the side with Andrew Bogut, uh, most of their bigs. Uh, and I mean, that's something to where if they were healthy with Steph and Clay the whole series, I believe that would have won seven games and they would have closed it out and won it. Uh, but if, if it was with Kevin Durant, uh, that was still would have been another story as well. Curry fell all the 
So, Mr. Skip Bayless, before Kevin Durant joined the Golden State Warriors, how was his postseason career? Yeah, Kevin Durant can easily score 30 points per game. He only went to one finals uh, back in 2012. And then whenever we're looking at the, you know, the other years, 2014, they should have went to the finals. They lost to the Spurs, who were much older. You look into 2016, he blew a 3-1 lead. So right now, I don't know what Skip Bayless is talking about. I know Skip Bayless is probably going to use about the first and second finals MVPs he did win because Kevin Durant was dominant, especially in 2017. 2018, Kevin Durant probably had around uh, two really good games in game two and game three. We got to remember, guys, in the 2018 finals when LeBron was by himself with a bunch of Jordan Clarksons out there, the first game one, Kevin Durant only scored 11 points in that game. It should have been eight points, but he hit a three at the very end. Uh, he was non factorish at all. Seth Curry was taking that over. So in 2018, I've always stated this, will state it, Seth and Curry should have won that finals MVP. This was probably within the media. They just wanted to give it to KD to make him feel good. Just think about it, guys. If KD did not win the finals MVP, any of those championship runs, oh man, everyone would have kept on hating on him back and forth again and again. And that would have been a bad look for him. But no, Seth and Curry is a better player all time than Kevin Durant. And we're, now this is the this is the main thing, guys. We can actually finally see this with Kevin Durant. Him going to the Brooklyn Nets, being the number one option, being the number one guy, the whole foundation of the team. We can actually see, you know, how many championships he can win if so. I think he'll cover one championship within the next three to four years within the Brooklyn Nets, maybe even uh, the next year or two. Who knows? Uh, but within that, guys, this is the true test of KD's legacy because if he doesn't win another championship, that's a bad look for him. He's not going to be considered a winner at all by hopping on the bandwagon. Okay, number one, <laughs> I don't know why Draymond did that. He probably did that because he was so PO'd at the Cavaliers. And he just wanted to mess with LeBron's career for the next two to three years. So that's probably another way. Uh, but number two, guys, with Kevin Durant, I knew Skip Bayless was going to talk about both of those games and both of those series within Kevin Durant uh, on the Warriors against the Cleveland Cavaliers. Uh, you know, let, let me let me see what Seth, let me see what Skip Bayless finishes off with. Game 5, 6, and 7 of the 2016 Finals was all LeBron and Kyrie both together. Don't get me started on Kevin Love. He was, he was, was Kevin Love's always been Ryan and Anderson 2.0 when I was on the Cavs. It was never a big three. It was a big two. Initially, whenever they signed Kevin Love, it looked to be a big three. But well, that's another subject for another day about, about all that. Uh, was Whenever we're looking, whenever the Cavs did beat the Warriors in the 2016 Finals, entering the 2017 season before KD joined, the Warriors were still favorites to dominate the league and win the title. And then you add KD, that's just a lock. There's nothing else you can do about it. Sorry, guys. Sorry for pausing really quickly here. I'll, I'll, let, I'll let him finish. But whenever I was watching the 2016 finals and I, I evaluated game five, six, and seven, you can tell with the Warriors, or especially with Steph Curry, not only did he quit, but it felt like there's stuff behind the scenes. And this is just me, you know, evaluating, seeing things. Steph Curry gave up. 
to where I don't know if this was because the NBA was rigged or scripted, or they told Steph Curry, hey, you know, this is planned for LeBron to come back and win this. Don't do your thing. Just stop. And we, guys, watch game five, six, and seven. Look at Stephen Curry. The offensive gameplay, how the Warriors usually were, they toned it down by 40%. Just watch those games again. And now you now with the Warriors not really carrying on offense with Stephen Curry, now you saw the doorway was open for Kyrie and LeBron to go ham, and they did. Uh, but I, I don't want to get more into conspiracy stuff. That's just me as an NBA fan. You know, I always watch the regular season, the playoffs, evaluate everything. That's how I saw the series did play and go down with. But and to be honest, the Warriors should have won that series in five games easily without Draymond or not. Yo, Russell Westbrook gets a <laughs> he gets a bad rap, man. Listen, listen. The Thunder should have won two championships within that time period. They messed up by trading James Harden. They didn't have that go-to score that could help out with Kevin Durant because Russell Westbrook isn't an effective, efficient score from the outside, more inside. And whenever Kevin Durant did have James Harden, who did close out that Game 5, 22 Conference Finals, a game against the Spurs, James Harden was a great piece, a great score to play with uh, Kevin Durant. Now letting them go for Kevin Martin and uh, I, don't, I don't remember who else, some draft picks, I think one or another, two players. Kevin Durant needs another isolated score with him. That's why I think whenever he goes to Brooklyn and plays with Kyrie Irving next season, they will be dominant. And this is something to where... You know, that's that's how Katie likes to play. Katie joined the Warriors. It was more offensive moving the ball, you know, spot up shooters. And Kevin Durant, you know, he was he said he was fine with it, but and then whenever he did leave the Warriors, he said he didn't like that. And you can tell that's not how Kevin Durant plays. Kevin Durant is more like a Jamal Crawford, uh one on one, Kyrie Irving, you know, isocentric player. Now he can be the number one option on your team. Usually we don't see that as number one option, except for uh Michael Jordan. And then now you have Kevin Durant and Kobe, uh, but you know, th- I mean, that's how it is. So I'm, I'm very, I'm very excited to see what Kevin Durant does with the Brooklyn Nets. Go. 
Exactly. And whenever Kevin Durant's playing with uh, Steph Curry and Klay Thompson, he doesn't have any stress. He doesn't have any problems. He can score, again, 10 points in a game, and they're still going to blow out a team in the playoffs or in the finals. And we look at Steph and KD, Steph's already been established. He's a winner. He's a dynasty setter. He's top 15 all time. Whenever we look at Kevin Durant, he still ha- he still has a lot to prove. I don't know if he can lead a team to a championship. You, you can't pull from what he did with the Warriors because that was Steph Curry's kingdom. And whenever... Uh, KD was out, Steph Curry took him to the finals. So how valuable are you as a number one option for a team? As I've seen with uh, Kevin Durant whenever he's won championships, yeah, as a number two option. I haven't seen him as a number one to where what he can do within that. But this is very exciting. Again, guys, we have to look forward to the next year's to raise with Brooklyn because all the people who are saying Steph Curry is below uh, Kevin Durant and Kevin Durant's better and Kevin Durant was the reason for the Warriors. All right, all right, cool, guys. Let's let's just wait and see what he does with the Brooklyn Nets and see if it's the same effect. Because whenever you're looking at Kevin Durant joining the Warriors, that's going to be the same thing if Giannis were to go and join the Warriors, uh, you know, the next two seasons. But, yeah, I'm, I'm going to leave it off here. Uh, we already know Skip Bayless' stance about these two guys. Uh, I agree more with Shannon Sharp within here. Shannon Sharp is very biased for LeBron, but whenever it comes to Kevin Durant's decision-making and the Warriors move and everything, uh, Shannon Sharp's been on point uh, within this, guys. All right, see you.